instead. Well, we saw you the mid today. Didn't work out that well. Maybe PX7 can switch things up. Maybe he can show us how to use any diff mid. Yeah, let's see if that happens here. And game number two is going to be the decider matchup for Falcon Esports, unless Araki Oshi has something to say about it. Yep, they're starting on the same side of the map. Dax and First Things. First Things is going for the purple, and he's going to be the first one to clear his buff. Vin tries to ruin the day of Dax, and Dax still secures it for himself, having to use the Retribution. Hmm. Second time around that uh, Vin tries to invade the jungle. Expect maybe more invasion to come once the first six uh, is prepared and with sort of like a success of Vin, like he knows that he's not really challenged. He will continue on onto the Bobo Bomb. Honestly, Vin doesn't have to do much here, but Vin looks like he's gonna get punished. Oh. First blood. Mm. A little bit of an overextension there. I guess he was really confident in the fact that no one else at some point was uh, with the Dax. That's why he went all in for it. So what Vayne was doing was very good. He he doesn't have to go into that deep because he just has to show his face in order to get the buffs a little bit tankier. So he went in way too deep for, for me. Skylar now going up against Kid X, having oh, to use the oh. Purify very early. Yep, still level 2, level 3. If it was level 4, then Skylar would be gone with the Blazing Duet. But yeah, it is what it is. Anyway, Vayne speaking the rotation and Kid X. Recall just in time. Yeah, Benny is not too worried going up against Vin as well as Kyler. Even though he saw first he's there, he understands having the uh, damage reduction inside of his own turret will keep him relatively safe. At this point, you have to start winning your EXP matchup, and that's what Araki Hoshi is doing. They want to get this turtle. Ah, uh, just as you mentioned, the turtle is currently up, and uh, Falcon is going to start the turtle, but when six is there, just start the engagement. Vin is going to come in for the other side, Vin. Comes in, Kid X taken out, Vin secures the turtle, steals it away for the hands of Falcon Esports, and not only the turtle, but Royal Milk as well went down. Yeah, Falcon did not respect what Araki Hoshi had there. Araki Hoshi, they already won the EXP trade, so they really shouldn't have forced the fight there. And having Persic as well, this is the ability of Abaxia, is that he has the life bin effect on his passive. So he can lower down your, your recovery and your shield generation so the Angela isn't going to be able to have maximum impact. Vin, three man, uh, three man wild charge was huge. Secured the turtle and more importantly, dealt a lot of crop control and damage. But still only the turtle though, so when it comes to gold difference, yeah, 1,007 cool. And again, one good Team fight could probably swing the uh, goal back onto Falcon Esports, but Arkyoshi, they are not going to let that happen. They want to try to find a advantage space at the bottom. Kidex will be chased on, and now Benny is alone under the turret, but the focus on the Kidex right now. All in on the Kidex with first six. Doing that kill, Dax arrived, but nothing much you can do about the situation. Yeah, very good engage coming in from Vin. Showcasing why the Grok is still an amazing pick into the role position because once you see an opportunity, you can start off a, a, an amazing engage with a lot of damage. So, Arki Hoshi, 2,000 up in three minutes. This is huge. 2,000 can equi it's equivalent to one full item. Oh, PS7. Oh, no. In trouble, but oh, okay. Kidnap was able to dash away. So, everybody resets, but uh, we can see the map control that RQ Hoshi is starting to have. Oh yeah, it's, it's a lot. So this is a big difference where First Six this time is using a jungler that doesn't have to uh, focus on the farm. He can actually focus on going for those objectives. So this box is a very big pickup for them. Understanding that picking up Ling would be a problem. It will be falling into the trap of Falcon. So this time they don't fall into the trap. They just pick up a box here and have a normal game. Here we go, the turtle. But keep an eye on the Royal Mist getting coming from the mid. He's gonna go in from behind. Royal Mist putting a lot of pressure on the first six. But first six is gonna be the one to get a mega kill. And he is gonna be the one as well to secure the turtle. Royal Mist, as much as he wanted to zone up first six, but it did not happen. 
that's what that's the showcase of what I mean by Dawn using the X Borg is good against the Fredrin because you deal a lot of damage onto the Fredrin, you force the hard guard to go inside the Fredrin, and then you start to punish that, especially when you have the box here, you have the life being effect onto that Fredrin so he doesn't heal as much and the shield isn't gonna be as big, and then you just wait it out, and then after that you get a free kill. And uh, Vin looking for more free kills at the bottom. Oh, for six to open it up against KDX. Look at the amount of damage from the tank. Just for Skyler to follow up later on. Watch that's really caught apart. And now Dax, where is he gonna go? Dax is taking a lot of damage. Vin taking a good amount of damage as well. The Blazing Duet comes in between all of them. And PX7 is gonna make sure that Vin will not go home alive. The hard guard from PX7. Ooh. Woo! That was so close. That was very close, as a matter of fact. And uh, first is now in 4 0 and 3. A massive difference from the first game in the series. Now he has the Guardian Helmet. So he is able to survive for a very, very long time to the fight. Honestly, Boxia is one of the tank junglers that I feel has been doing very well after the patch update. I mean, he hasn't. He doesn't do anything different. It's just, I don't know. Maybe he's always been this good. It's, the, it's just that. People haven't been picking it up. Yeah, allowing uh, teams to go back to basic. Get a box here, run down your opponent, make sure you have the jungle invasion, make sure you have the map control advantage, and that's exactly what he's doing. Oh, and he's mm -hmm. Okay. Better mirror image away to safety. Uh, uh, again, going up against Finn is very, very scary. Oh. They're gonna get boxed in. Oh, straight onto the back line. Kidax is the one that's in trouble right now with Skyler. For the off Kidax. Great targeting by First Six. First Six goes for Kidax every single time. They understand that this Angela is what is. The Angela is the glue that keeps this draft together. The moment the Angela is taken down, the rest of the team falls apart. Oh. But something could fall apart at the bottom. Hot guy onto Dex. And this is Dex to get a bit of hot guard. But then again, it's really low himself as well. Blazing Nua will be used by Fanny just to get away. And uh, there's nothing much that Falcon Esports could do at the bottom. Looks like this is the counter. You can let the Angela go. Just pick up the Boxia. The Boxia is going to be more than enough to deal with the amount of shield and heal coming in from a draft that relies heavily on the Angela. Look at Kid Axe again, taking a lot of damage. Lucky enough for him that Benny is there. If not Kid X, would have been taken down for the fifth time. I feel like Falcon after this game, if they lose this one, they got a lot to consider. The Angela first pick doesn't seem as strong anymore. Oh, but uh, Dex still pretty strong. Still holding it on onto the side. Well, six targeted onto him, but that's not the target that they want instead. What they want is the purple buff for the side of Falcon Esports. Arkyoshi, 7,000 gold lead. This is a massive gold lead, basically 1,000 gold per minute. And this translates to, to roughly about one item for each member of the team. Looking at the Edith mid is unfortunately not doing so well. Not being able to, to retaliate when Arkyoshi wants to go aggressive. Oh, wow, touch on the Royal Mill. And nice barrier there, Royal Mill. Cannot escape. The last incident will come in, but Royal Mill found a gap between the barrier and enters to his base to put himself to safety. Now Holy Healing has, sorry, Holy Defense has been used. So the top inhibitor is gonna be an easier, easier avenue for Arkyoshi to go in. Right now we gotta check on the items, and we look at Royal Milk having one item. Looking at Exbord, looking at Dawn already towards his third item. This is the difference a 7,000 goalie can have. Almost every member is one item above the uh, opposite side of their own lanes. And Benny is finding it hard to bomb. It's not completed yet. He's uh, training the items. So it's going to be hard for him to engage and steal away the lot. They might need to let this lot go. I feel like if they want to go for a fight, they are going to get taken out very, very quickly. Because again, the export is a counter towards a composition that wants to fight a prolonged team fight. So Arkyoshi this time definitely won the draft with the Deboxia, as well as denying the Valentina. If Falcon Esports grabs the Valentina for themselves, maybe we would we, we'd be seeing a different game. But forcing, forcing BX7 on this Edith is a game changer. Well, speaking about forcing though, Vin is just doing his own forcing. 
down to the bottom lane just to keep Royal Milk away from the mid lane. They took down the inner turret. So now looking for more, just continue to put on pressure while waiting for the Lord to arrive. Again, prolonged team fight is good for RT Hoshi here. Don is doing as much damage as he can. Same as Rinzia, just spraying with the Ghost Bursters. Now they're attacking the mid lane inhibitor. Bond is almost here. Arkyoshi waiting for the right time to execute. We can see that Skyler moves out to the top and clears out the minion wave. And at any time now, they will go in. They are prepared for it. Wall charge is available. It has a bit barrier. It's going up. Waiting for the turn to go down. A wall charge is still kept on the side of Arkyoshi. Very, very specific gameplay, but looks like right now they're executing it onto the back line. PX7 has to fall back. And last insanity on the attacks, not much damage, but then again, it's good enough. The fact that they shoot him away, back on to heal. And now the bottom lane, Benny tries to clear it off, but Benny, look at the damage on the Benny. Can't take that much damage as the turret will fall as well. Yeah, Arakehoshi got every single inhibitor with a neutral ward. That's a big, big advantage. 7.8k gold advantage from the Lord. 8,000, in fact, advantage from the Lord. Now, the super minion has been mobilized from the top lane, mid lane, as well as bottom lane. This is going to be very difficult for Falcon Esports to, to defend because only the Claude can clear the minions fast enough. Even PX7 will have a difficult time clearing this up. Yeah, even the jungle is cleared up by RQ Oshi as well. Even Falcon Esports is able to get out and get into the jungle to continue farm. There will not be anything there. This is probably checkmate by Araki Hoshi. 11,000 gold lead ahead. Looking at the Moskov almost full item. And Benny just completed his third item. That's a very big difference if you're three items in. And your other goal laner, your opposing goal laner, is almost full item. 3,000 gold difference for the gold laners. Yeah, and as an entire squad, it's like 11.5k gold difference. But looks like they're still going to go in for it. And here we go. Straight onto the back. Rintia takes out PX7. Benny placing Duem back home. There's nothing much you can do about this. It's not about the damage, but he's not tanky enough. Royal Bill could be in trouble at this moment, but he heals up. And this is going to be game for RRQ Hoshi, as they will bring us to game number three. RRQ Hoshi refuses to fall in the same trap again. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Yeah, whatever, whatever the, the, the saying is. But either way, RRQ Hoshi, it 